The Small Business Show, episode 348 for Wednesday, October 6th, 2021. (music) Greetings, folks, and welcome to The Small Business Show here, here at businessshow.co, the show and the place where we are always small business-ing. Sponsors for this episode include Bambi, B-A-M-B-E-E dot com slash small, where you can schedule your free HR audit and NetSuite, N-E-T-S-U-I-T-E dot com slash S-B-S. Your financial future for your business can be tracked here. We'll talk more about why you want to check each of these out in a few minutes. For now, here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And in Lafayette, California, I am Shannon Jean. I love me some Bambi. So some huge HR stuff. It's crazy. I, it's crazy for 99 bucks a month, too. Yeah. Oh, by, yeah. oh, spoiler alert. That's right. That's coming later in the episode. Yeah, but I, I will. Sorry, that's true. It's, it's, it's no, no, it no. It is phenomenal. Because I, I, I always feel when you mention that that sponsor is because so many of the you know issues you face as small business owners just HR related. So anytime we have an HR sponsor or guest, I'm always like, oh yeah, how can you solve, how can you fix this for me? So yeah, cool. yeah, 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 yeah. Good, very good. How goes it out there, man? It goes, it goes. I, you know, I'm small businessing like crazy. I'm learning a lot. You know, I mentioned last week that we're investigating the possibility of an idea of selling. One of the businesses, one of the, the very newest business. And if you if you work for me and you haven't heard about it, don't sweat it. It's not the business you work for. <laughs> this uh, is <laughs> really what? <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. No, I would. Right. Uh, if I were going to talk about it publicly, I would definitely tell my people first. Um, in fact, you know, I was talking to my father in law about this. He sold his business a couple of years ago. <laughs> I actually wound up closing days before pandemic lockdown, which as he calls Brilliant. it, is truly Brilliant. dumb luck. Yeah, exactly. But um, he was telling me about the, you know, the M&A process. And this is a business that he had run for, uh, you know, for almost 30 years. He'd had, ha- the business has, he had with the business, hundreds of employees, very large deal. And uh, when the people came, you know, when the buyers would come to his office, he would actually bring in his senior management to meet them. He told his buyers um, and, and, and management, you know, you can ask each other any questions you want. That's why you're here. The only things that are not on the table to talk about are the price and some of the other specifics of the terms of what the deal would be, because that wasn't between the buyer and his employees because his employees didn't have ownership in the company, right? Like they, they weren't decision makers in at that level, but otherwise he, he did that. And he said every buyer was shocked. Like we never get to meet with people that actually work here, the people that we would be, you know, employing after we bought the business. And they really liked it. And I, you know, I think it helped, you know, get the deal done. Uh, and it also helped the transition too, because nobody felt like they were out of the loop. You know, yeah, it was, that's I, I, it's okay. The to positive talk side about. of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, it if was you're he, kind of retiring. I mean, it that was on it exactly where you're at and how you've uh, kind of set things up and uh, groomed the employees over time to correct their yeah. expectations. But that's awesome. Yeah. You can't that's do that really out cool. of the blue, right? That you, no. you're right. That's no. a, there's a grooming process that leads yeah. up to that, but yeah. 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 Well, that's great. So, so it, I'm learning. I don't know if we'll actually sell this other business or not, but it's, it's certainly interesting to consider it and look at, you know, what the, how you value things and all that. So I will have lots to share uh, yeah. as as we progress. It won't be a weekly thing in the conversation, uh, though. But uh, but you know, I'm learning a lot. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, no, that's great. Yeah. I have you know, uh, I have a business that I'm in the process of selling some rights to uh, ah. to the U.S. government, uh, which is a fascinating exercise, a very slow exercise, <laughs> and in itself. But uh, I've been working on it for a couple of years. I had a meeting just today, and interesting. Um, yeah. And then, you know, today it was like, well, I think we're about nine months away from closing on this deal. And I'm like, okay, well, let's see how it goes. <laughs> I'm not going to hold my breath. Yeah. Since it's, well, you that, know, but uh, that's the other thing you and I have learned. Uh, you know, certainly the first time I learned it was with you. I, I, I'm sure we've both learned it in different ways since then. But, you know, do not cash the check or cash no. out of the business in your mind. No, no don't even think of the money. Uh, actually uh, the dollar, cash the check. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Exactly. So yep. uh, that's, that's great. But yeah, like you, I'll be checking in from time to time. Yep. I can 
start talking about it and see how things go. And oh, yeah. uh, it's 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 an interesting uh, process. But uh, I do today, have a I do have a quick yes, tip though. Oh, yeah. One of the one of the M and A guys that I was talking with, in fact, it was Bob Grewal who we had on the show here, uh, told me about because he was asking, you know, what what type of entity is the business? Is it an LLC or this or and the other? And it, this one happens to be an LLC, like most everything I have. Uh, but I mentioned that we do have one business that's not for sale. That is a C corp. And he's like, how long ago did you form the C corp? And I told him, it's like, Oh, you know, this is like 20 plus years. He's like, okay, all right. All right. Well, if you ever sell that one, uh, he's like, I think you can, there, there's a huge tax break on capital gains tax when you sell small business shares in a C corp. And it's called, oh. he's like, just make sure you tell your accountant, 1202 that's the magic number yeah and he said if you formed your c corp in the last let's say five years or something like that you can sell it and pay no federal income tax on the shares he's like that's why a lot of these you know like silicon valley type startups that are going to grow a business but not earn any revenue no not earn any income uh, I mean, they'll have revenue, but but it'll be a wash. You know, if they if they're going to be at a loss or at a, a net neutral, uh, they will form it as a C corp so that you know when they sell it to you know somebody for a hundred million dollars or whatever, they walk away without paying any taxes wow. on that. Wow. Yeah, it's called the small business stock gains exclusion. There you go. Uh, that's fascinating, right? Wow. I know. Yeah, we got to put, put that in the in the show notes. It's so in the show notes. Like, yep. He's like, okay, just whisper yeah. the words 1202 to That's your cool. accountant and they'll take care of the rest. But yeah, he's like, you know, nobody knows about this thing. You didn't know about it. I didn't know about no, it. Like nobody ever either. told us before. He's like, but this is how these deals are all happening. And it just completely skirts around paying any federal tax. He made sure he, every time he said it, it was federal because yeah, states are sure. still going to come in and get their, their fair share or, or their share. Whether we agree that it's fair or not is sort of irrelevant. <laughs> yeah, of course. That's a whole other show. <laughs> That's a whole other show. I don't know that there's actually any hope in even having that discussion. It's just no, how it, no, it's just how it be. But like yeah. everything with the tax code, not our rules. And yeah. so if you can find a way around it, you know, work it out with your accountant. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. I know. That's yeah. Good stuff, man. Always something to learn. That's That's what I love about this process. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, in this show. Very, very good. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So what are we talking about today, Dave? Well, we're going we're gonna to talk about our favorite business books and podcasts. But uh, the first thing that we got a question in asking us, what accounting software do you use for your business oh. bookkeeping? Yeah. Yeah. I, That's a great question. It, it is. It's, um, you know, and we, and we have a sponsor that, uh, I, this was not our intention, but that, you know, fits right into this. Uh, but, uh, you know, I've always used, I mean, I've started with, when I started my businesses, I kept them in Quicken because they were like, yeah. I didn't know any better. And then back I moved then, to back Quicken. Back in the day. Back yeah. in the day. Exactly. Yep. When they were Schedule C's and that sort of thing before I had, you know, formed entities or anything like that. But um, then I moved to QuickBooks and I got pretty astute with QuickBooks. I actually wound up training it uh, for a while, sort of unintentionally, but you know, I was, I was doing my computer nerding thing and, and out and helping people. And when they found, I knew about QuickBooks, they would say, well, can you show me it? Yeah. Okay, sure. I wound up teaching, I wound up doing some classes and stuff on QuickBooks. But I, you know, if I were starting something today, I mean, it depends on the size of the business, you know, our, our sponsor, which we'll talk about in a little bit, NetSuite, it's sort of for the other side of this equation. As you, as you grow, that's where you'd want to go. Uh, right. The, you know, for starting out, I don't, I don't know. I, well, I would use QuickBooks because I'm super comfortable with it and I own it, right? Like I use QuickBooks desktop. I don't use the online yeah. version, but I'm not sure that I, I, that may be a hindrance for me. I, like FreshBooks might be a better option for, well, for certainly for a lot of people and possibly even also for me, even though I've got this, you know, investment into time and, and, you know, dollars into QuickBooks. So I don't know. What, yeah. I, what do you I use? like yeah. that too. See, I used, um, for years, I've used an application called Account Edge. It used to be called Mind Your Own Business, right? I remember MYOB. MYOB. Yeah. 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 And uh, lately, though, I'm using an older version on an older Mac because they stopped, They, you know, after, uh, I don't know if it was Big Sur, what, I, one of the Mac operating system upgrades, they said, hey, we're not going to do it. I so moved 
at the time, both. So, you know, yeah. Backbeat and Mac Observer. I moved both of our businesses to, to Account Edge probably, I don't know, almost 20 years ago and yeah. ran two sets of books for two years in them before I finally decided, you know, I, I'm not, when I was at Citibank, uh, this is before I really, before I had any businesses, I mean, that's not entirely true, but you know, I worked at Citibank in the home banking division. Uh, so we, we had an online system where people could dial in. We actually had built this customized phone with Philips electronics that had a keyboard pull out. So that huh. people that didn't have computers, it was a computer shoved into a phone with a screen and stuff. Um, but, you know, we, we ran Citibank's online banking. It was called direct access. If you look at the URLs for Citibank.com today and you log in, you will see DA in some of those URLs. That's direct access. So this is what I did, whatever, 25, 30 years ago, whatever yeah. it was. And MYLB was our first partner with it. And, uh, you know, so that we could link in because I was like, guys, we have to link it with somebody else. Like, this is crazy that we have this system and it's not, you know, nobody can use it. And I said, we need to link it with with Quicken because Intuit is the market leader. And they're like, yeah, but we can get a good deal with MYOB. And like, yeah, but nobody's using MYOB. And yeah, that's right. And I heard myself saying that after I was doing <laughs> two years of this double books. I'm like, it's still that way. Nobody uses Account Edge. Yes, in many ways it's better, but what's its longevity? Like if somebody's going to pick one of these to succeed, it's going to be QuickBooks. And, and so I, I agree. I gave up on account edge and, and stayed with QuickBooks. So, yeah, I think that's a good decision and we're migrating away and I'm, I'm in that process right now of looking like, okay, do I, uh, I'm, I'm kind of this standalone desktop guy as well, but yeah. there are definite benefits to paying for the service and getting all the latest features and compliance and integrations, especially, you know, well with your different things as they change. So, um, you know, I, I, I'm going to lean towards fresh books. And uh, actually, I have uh, my wife, Renee, she's doing an assessment of a few different services, mm. and make a decision because her business, she runs our vacation rental uh, yeah. businesses. And so each of those is a separate LLC, uh, which we can talk about at some point in the future if we ever talk about real estate. And so they, you know, she manages those and uh, needs, there are some, uh, real estate specific accounting packages that are really powerful for that kind of business that I like a lot. Interesting. And, uh, we're just going through there. So I think it really, it depends on your business. I mean, if you have a service business, you really have to have powerful, you know, invoicing yeah. ca capacity and mobile capacity. If your techs uh, or service people are out in the field and they need to connect that that's critically important. And I just can't imagine you or, I would think that you really need uh, an online service that you can tap into and use all those uh, bells and whistles. Um, you know, if you're a contractor, you want to be sure, you know, building contractor estimates are really important. Um, you know, if you're self-employed, uh, solopreneur type thing, then you have different needs. And so I think you really have to break down. The first question you ask yourself is not what accounting package I need, is what features uh, uh, um, my my business needs. Yeah. What are the features that I need, and how am I going to use it? Like, I love FileMaker. I I, I use oh. it for a, a ton of stuff, but it's not an accounting package. Uh, and don't ever try to make it one because um, you'll you'll fail. Because I've tried. I, uh, I you know I have all of our invoicing for Backbeat Media is tracked in FileMaker because that, it that's great. It makes more sense to have our invoicing tied to our customer records than it does to have it tied to our accounting. However, you know, I, I export from FileMaker using IIF yeah. files so that I can slurp all the data into QuickBooks because otherwise, you know, if you're manually entering it, there's opportunities for human error. Uh, and also it's, it's, you know, pedantic and slow and in, inefficient, but yep. it means that my account, like if somebody, like if when we're not, but if somebody were, you know, interested in buying that business or something and they said, oh, can you show us what your AR looks like? And be like, uh, yeah, yes, that's right. I could, yeah, yeah. but it's not. They're like, well, you just pull up a report in QuickBooks. I'm like, yeah, right. And that'll show zero, <laughs> but, which is untrue, <laughs> you know? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, I yeah, see my so AR in different ways in FileMaker, but not the way that you know, an accountant would want to see. Correct. Yeah. So I, that's, that is a, a good point is, you know, I have done the same thing and I have, and I track all my inventory and file maker and I really like it, but there are, 
some definite pitfalls. Um, I think accessibility can be one as well, unless you're using like FileMaker in the cloud. But, you know, it might be just us old school guys. The the versatility of FileMaker is just unbelievable. And well, I, um, I highly recommend checking out FileMaker server, man. I, like, yeah, we have been but running. You manage that yourself. Yes. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, yeah. yeah. So I've FileMaker, done that too. FileMaker server, we pay FMP host right now to uh, to host our FileMaker server. And it's like 60 bucks a month for the level that we need. And, sure. and it's great. It's, I have, I have managed it internally here. Anytime I had a power outage or an internet outage and everybody else that works for me couldn't do their job though, started to become a huge liability. It was like, okay, wait, 60 bucks a month. And I don't have a headache yeah. anymore. Oh yeah. So that yeah. went away. However, there is now with FileMaker 19, there is a FileMaker server for Linux and, oh. I, you know, we, we do run a Linux machine, a uh, series of them at our, at our colo, uh, well, not a colo host anymore. It's a, it's our, you know, host that we keep all the servers on. And right. so theoretically I could run, you know, that there and save my 60 bucks a month because that's a machine that needs to keep running no matter what, you know, that like that's runs all the websites and everything. So uh, but I haven't, I haven't messed with that yet. So I, yeah. uh, but it is out there. So, but yeah, FileMaker server that changes everything. Cause then you can access it from your phone or your iPad. Yeah, and yeah, I've yeah. done that at trade shows. You know, we keep a contacts database and it, I'll yeah, be walking huge. up to a booth and it's like, wait, what's the person's name? I need to, oh, yeah. Wait, yeah, that's their name. Perfect. Great. Yep. And I also think if you don't need the massive, uh, what's the word I'm looking for uh, flexibility and you're not going to build your own solutions and adjust fields and create calculations, and everything else that what you just described is a, is a, a huge argument to have, you know, an online service that you're, that you're into. Right. Yeah. But we yeah. do create all those calculations. You like, do. Yes. Yes. Correct. With your business. Yeah. Correct. But I would not say you're the average. Oh no. Uh, you need to have a tech. You got to have somebody who, has that capacity knows what an IFF file. Yeah, you got to be a nerd. Important. Yeah, you got to be a nerd. Yeah, so for sure. if, if you're, yeah, yeah. but uh, but filemakers good. Yeah, so, for us nerds. Yeah, yes, I love it too. I I I couldn't imagine living without it. But uh, but yeah, counting things, make a list of the features that you need, and then go start visiting sites and go. Okay, yeah. what I'm do they offer? What, what does your, it cost? You what know. your wife comes up with uh, as she as she researches what you need for your real estate business. I'll come back here and and uh, comment on it after we uh, use it for a couple of months and Please see do. which one we wind up with. Yeah, yeah. cool. All right, well, I want to talk about business books and uh, and and our you know some of our favorite business podcasts. The, yeah, me too. The next thing that I want to do, though, is I want to talk about our two sponsors, if that's okay with you. Yeah, sounds great, man. All right. Look, as we all know, tackling your business's finance to-dos can be daunting enough without being slowed down by the wrong accounting software. Have you ever sat, like I have at times, and said, QuickBooks sometimes feels a little bit more like slow books? Well... NetSuite by Oracle is the number one financial system, no matter how big your business grows, right? It scales with visibility and control of your financials, your inventory, your HR, your e-commerce, and more. NetSuite is everything you need to grow all in one place. These people really know what they're doing. And really, Oracle NetSuite is one of the secrets of rock star CFOs because they understand the missions, goals, and objectives of the organizations they lead and are often charged with articulating this vision to investors and others. And as CFO, you now have the opportunity to make things happen, not just record what happened after the fact. Special financing is back. NetSuite is offering a one-of-a-kind financing program only for those ready to switch today. So head to netsuite.com slash SBS right now. That's netsuite.com slash SBS. Go check it out. NetSuite by Oracle. Our thanks to NetSuite at netsuite.com slash SBS for sponsoring this episode. Next up is Bambi. When running a business, HR issues can kill you. Things like wrongful termination suits, minimum wage requirements, labor regulations, and HR manager salaries aren't cheap. They're an average of 70 grand a year. Bambi, spelled B-A-M-B-E-E, -E, was created specifically for us, small businesses. 
You can get a dedicated HR manager, craft your HR policy, and maintain all your compliance, all for just $99 a month. I know. 99 bucks a month. With Bambi, you can change HR from your biggest liability to your biggest strength. In fact, they they shared with us some things that Bambi users have said. One of them wrote in and said, navigating COVID-19 era has been challenging. Being able to reach out to my HR rep and get a timely response has already been such a stress reliever. It truly gives me the confidence to face any of the new challenges, knowing that I'm not alone and I have an educated, experienced agent who is in my corner. Alex and the Bambi team are the best. Can't beat having real HR resources at my fingertips so I don't have to worry about local and national compliance. You didn't start your business because you wanted to spend time on HR compliance, right? And Bambi's great. It's month to month. There's no hidden fees. Cancel any time from onboarding to terminations. They customize your policies to fit your business all for just $99 a month. Go to Bambi.com slash small right now to schedule your free HR audit. That's Bambi.com slash small spelled BAM to the B-E-E dot com slash small. Go check it out. You'll get, I think you're going to love it. That really, just go check it out. Our thanks to Bambi for sponsoring this episode. All right, man. Let's get into our favorite books and podcasts. Uh, you you yeah, start. Sounds great. Yeah, sure. So I'm I'm a voracious reader. I like I, I have some books here that I really think highly of, and I have some ones that you probably haven't heard of that I I will explain why I think they're powerful for uh, small business owners to read. The first one I really highly recommend for you. It's called The Slight Edge by Jeff Olson. And uh, we'll put all the links to these in the show notes so you can come find them. But with the slight edge, what Jeff does is his whole focus is that it's not a massive change or effort that makes the difference in your life. It's the focus on constant small improvements that really make you successful uh, in all areas, your business, your personal life, all this kind of stuff. And he really makes a strong argument for that with lots of great examples, lots of good stories. Um, you definitely want to have it. It's a great book to be uh, having your nightstand to you know, dip in and out of it. Another thing I really like is he came back and wrote one for, for uh, young people called The Slight Edge for Teens Ooh. that explains how to use this concept and kind of lean into making small improvements every day to get ahead. It's uh, I highly recommend it. The Slight Edge. By Jeff Olson. Very cool. I'd never heard of that book. All right. This is good. Really I'm, good. I'm, I'm yeah. making a list and we'll share it with you in the show notes <laughs> at, at businessshow.co. Uh, that's where we list all the show notes and everything. You can get those delivered to your inbox. Simply visit businessshow.co and sign up and they will, they will then every week, they'll just appear in your inbox so you don't have to think about it. It's great. It's magic. It's yeah. magic. And where I learned about that trick is actually my first podcast on the list, which is marketing over coffee. Uh, this is oh, one of my it. favorite business podcasts. Christopher Penn and John Wall get together. They, they literally started doing this. I don't think it's still this ca the case now, but it, it actually might be. They would get together once a week at like 5 a.m. before they went to you know their jobs at a Dunkin' Donuts and record oh, cool. over coffee. Yeah. And they are, they, it moves fast. The hosts stay right with each other. Like it is like they are quick. These guys are great and they have great stuff in there. They talk a lot about, you know, it's marketing focused, which I'll pretty much, it, it, you know, infuses all of business. They talk a lot about, you know, the value and tips about link building, SEO, and mailing lists. Like, they were the ones that sold me on the idea of don't forget, even though it seems yeah. like email is old, it's not, you know, right, manage right. a mailing list, it's going to help you. Um, one tip that I got from them recently, because I asked about it on this show, and th that show delivered, uh, Christopher Penn was saying to manage LinkedIn and to Tweak your profile so that it's valuable to you. Spend 60 seconds three times a day. And after five days, LinkedIn will be tweaked for you. What you do is if you see posts that you don't care about, click the little three dots and uh, choose. I don't want to see more of this. It'll ask you why. That's fine. He's like, just go through your list and, uh, you know, spend 60 seconds doing that. Or if something there is something you like, click the like button. 
uh, and do that for 60 seconds, three times a day for five days. And at the end of those five days, your LinkedIn profile will be fully tuned to you because their algorithm has to adapt. They make a lot of their money based on the like the job search there. So they have to keep people engaged. They don't want to send you away. And so they want people to come to LinkedIn. So their algorithm is super adaptive. Do that. And uh, they're right. It totally works. Yeah. That's so that's really good. Yeah. Good advice. Yeah, man. Yep. Very cool. That's good. So the next one, next book that I recommend everybody read, it's not just about your business. Some of these or a lot of these books are like that, that I really feel strongly about. Uh, this one's a little controversial, but, uh, and I'll tell you why it's the power of positive thinking by Norman Vincent Peale. Um, I'm not really a religious person. I am spiritual, but uh, not an organized religion. And sure. and so you, this book, he does reference things Got that it. based on Christian values, he mentions the Bible, and that turns a lot of people off, but it's sold like 5 million copies. Uh-huh. Uh, he, he uses uh, just some great methods and stories and examples to convince you that how you think matters how you think about yourself, how you think about your life, how you tell your story. That's what is, this is one of the reasons why I always talk about story on this show for your small business, but it's also about your own yourself. You know, we've, we've always said, what story do you want to tell at the end of the day, at the end of the month, quarter, year, your life, you know, what do you want to tell? So you have the, the power to do it. And, and the power of positive thinking is lots of, uh, of tips on how to master your inner judge the inner voice that steers your thoughts. And, you know, if you get past some of the, the religious connotations or just kind of move through them, it's a very powerful book, The Power of Positive Thinking, Norman Vincent Peale. Highly recommend it. Man, you are making me reorganize my list. I have a, a new podcast that is on my list of favorites, and I couldn't wait to recommend it to you, but I was going to wait. I was going to make it my last one, but (laughs) you made me change because the name of the show is the business of story. Now, Ah, yeah. Host Park Howell is smart because in all of his listings, he does something that you and I might want to consider. There is no the, it is business of story because it shows up higher alphabetically. (laughs) Right. I I know. Yep. But he, understands, just like you were saying, understands the superpower of story. And he interviews folks who have lived the same. So many, like the whole show is people who have, like all of us, uh, you know, met with adversity, made terrible errors in our business lives, and then just stuck with it and decided to tell a better story in the end. And so they, you know, they do what we always talk about here. And it's just so great to hear regularly uh, from people who are, as as Park says, living into your story. That's yeah, such powerful it. words. I know. Yeah. I mean, look at the look at the name or the the title of the most recent show: "The Powerful Sales Stories a Positive Mindset Creates." I know. Ties yep. right into this uh, positive thinking. It it, it, yep. it really works, boy. It, yeah. Oh, it, uh, yeah. You you sold so, me on so this concept years ago, and yep. and just hearing about it regularly. This is on one of I have you know I have my podcatcher set up, but I I use Overcast, so I'm able to organize things into lists and groups. And this one is in my if I'm driving in the car for 20 minutes somewhere group. This show is one of the ones on that list. So yeah, it's That's great. Really good. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Next book that is an absolute essential that everybody needs to read before, during, uh, after running a business is The E-Myth by Michael Ah, Gerber. Of course. We've talked about this show or on the show ad nauseum over the years. It is the absolute, in my opinion, best book to read about the highs and lows of being an entrepreneur, how to power through, you know, really tough times that you are absolutely going to face and one of the most important concepts or a couple of them that that I'll highlight, but one of them is that you need to learn how to work on your business, not in your business all the time. And you can get the freedom to do that by reading this book. Another thing I really love this very, these are very simple concepts, but they have a big impact is when you're first starting out your company and you're running everything, or maybe it's you and one other person, go ahead and create that 
organizational chart for every job you do and just put your name or you and your partner's name in every single square on that org chart. And over time, as you grow your business and you start to delegate those things you're doing, or maybe you're hiring contractors or, you know, outside companies to do social media or whatever, you'll have that box ready to fill in somebody else's name. And that's how you build this organization. And And I've done it and it, and it works. Uh, the E-Myth by Michael Gerber. If you, uh, the, if you take away one book to read out of this list, that's it. Oh, there you go. Perfect. I like it. Yeah. Uh, the next one is a podcast. I'm, I'm, I guess I'm going to stick. I have a couple of books, but I'm going to stick sure. with podcasts for now. It's called As Told by Nomads. Host Teo Roxon, he goes and interviews people who have a, a global sort of big picture to their businesses. Now, it, like they, like the rest of us, also get stuck in the minutiae of our businesses, like it's how it works. But listening to these episodes, he he makes people sort of zoom out or he brings people on that are already good at zooming out and sharing what they're doing from that larger perspective, as well as people that are just working on their businesses from anywhere. So, I mean, like this, as That's told cool. by nomads is who these people are. They're just all over the place, physically all over the place. And that allows them to see things from a, a perspective that those of us that, you know, are kind of in the same spot all the time don't necessarily see, uh, you know, from outside of our bubbles and hustle, innovation and the importance of marketing are recurring topics on this show. And it, it's just it's great for that inspiration of getting out, you know, just reminding myself to zoom out on a semi-regular basis. And, you know, like you were saying with the E-Myth, you know, working on your business instead of in your business, this show, I don't know if that's Teo's intention with this show, but it helps me reminds me to zoom out because these people are telling these stories from such different perspectives. It's like, right. I got to get out of my own head here. So I, I love this show. It, it forces me to think different or think differently. If, if I wasn't an Apple user, I, I would say think, think differently. <laughs> right. It's more grammatically correct, but yeah, it's a, it's a great show. So yeah. That's I cool. recommend it. Yep. So a couple of things at first, you know, all these books I'm talking about, if you don't have the time to read or you don't enjoy reading, uh, they're all available on audiobooks, And sure. I highly recommend that, uh, you take, you know, one step or another reading or listening to them. Um, I'm a big fan of biographies and I think that they can, uh, really have an impact on us as small business owners. And I don't think you need to stick with other small business owners or different, you know, lots of uh, aspirational things. And I recently have read two that I really love. One, Andrew Carnegie, a yep. biography by a guy named David Nassau that did it. And the third one or second one I'm reading right now called The People's Tycoon. It's about Henry Ford uh, and the American century. And the the couple of takeaways I have on this Andrew Carnegie thing, you know, he became, uh, started businesses that eventually became U.S. Steel, um, was one of the wealthiest people on, or was the wealthiest person on yeah. earth at one time. Yeah. And the thing that the, you read his book, it's got a lot of historical stuff going on. If you like to read that, the main takeaway for me was, uh, all about how to successfully set up businesses, set up companies, install good managers, and then leave them alone. And I had no idea, you know, I just assumed like, oh, this guy must have spent all his time building these massive companies, but really he wasn't involved very much once things got going. And I got to figure out how to do that, man. Dude, this, <laughs> this guy was like in another continent and running these I companies. Know. He had some great, great people working for him that, the, you know, the first Charles Schwab, uh, Frick, I forget his first name, maybe Andrew, two yeah. also became billionaires. So, he, you know, he really, but he gave up. He didn't need to be in control. He facilitated these businesses, helped capitalize them, and then realized, now I need to get out of the way, of which the I way. think all of us could benefit from. Oh, I, my goodness. Right? I, like, that's, it, that's one of the things. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I feel so like it, this it, all the time. Me too, terribly, me too. terribly. Uh, oh. Yeah, it's tough. And the Ford biography, uh, which I'm only about halfway through, but the one thing I really picked up is Ford was very smart with, again, who he surrounded himself with. And their marketing was, they're one of the first large scale companies to really get away from promoting the product that they were selling and instead promoting the idea of the product. 
right? They're advertising and marketing. You're promoting uh, the freedom that owning a Model T would give you. How the car would bring your families together, help educate your children about the outside world. Aspirational and so on and so forth. marketing, man. Absolutely. Oh. And these, they were one of the first companies that they didn't talk about the transmission or how fast you could go. Um, you know, they, they, anything that was kind of related to the technical side, it, it kind of reminds me of Apple, you know, with Jobs. I was Jobs just going to say, like, Steve Jobs, yeah. they never talked about but no. the specs Processors of the machine, what can you do with it? Yeah. Correct. What you can do and how it impacts your life. And, you know, they didn't sell on the specifics. They focused on what the product could do for you. So it's a great read. It's called The People's Tycoon. Um, I, I, if you like reading that kind of thing or listening to biographies, I think you'll enjoy it. I love it. I love it. That's great. Yeah, good stuff. Oh, man. Yep. Okay. You got great. any more? I got, I have one more podcast. I have a book and we'll see if we, we need Let's to get there. But uh, okay. my next, the next podcast on my list is a podcast called Focused. Uh, it is David Sparks, who has been on this oh, yeah. show as a guest, and Mike Schmitz. They get together every two weeks, uh, twice a month ish. And, it, you know, technically, I, I suppose it's not a business podcast, but you know me, I'm obsessed with efficiency. And I'm especially obsessed with fixing where I am not efficient and where I am. And focus is such a huge part of that efficiency story, right? If you can stay focused, you can be efficient and get distracted. And, you know, well, everything just falls apart. They are like me in this regard. In fact, I, I was able to be on focused a couple of years ago. And it was right at the point in time where I mentioned that I was I was beginning my obsession with eradicating busy from my vocabulary. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, you know, and as soon as I said that, they said, well, you know, what is it that keeps you busy every day? And I said, well, you know, I'd, I'd rather say productive than busy. And that I don't even know that I ever answered the first question, because as soon as I said that, they were like, wait a minute, what did you just say? <laughs> and so those are the kinds of things they go deep on on that kind of stuff all the time where they're really obsessed about not only coming up with the right workflows to get things done, but the right way of thinking so that you are always approaching those things in the most valuable and efficient way to, pro to be productive. So I, I love what these guys do and I highly recommend this show. So That's focused. Great. Yeah. 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 And we have links for it. all this in the show notes at business show.co. Of course. That's great. Yeah. I have one more book that is nope. definitely worth hearing about. Yep. Um, it's a book that can really change your life, change your business life. It's uh, again, read, I think, I don't know, seven or eight million copies have been sold. It's written by who, who is a guy who's really thought of as the father of persuasion, uh, Robert Cialdini. And the book is called Influence, The Psychology of Persuasion. Um, many of the topics you hear me talking about on the show come from Cialdini's book. Things um. like reci reciprocity, social proof, credibility, scarcity, and, and, and more. This book is unbelievable. You know, uh, Cialdini, he goes through all these topics and he describes them in detail with a focus really on how to positively impact your life and others as well by using persuasion in a good way. Uh, and along the way, getting what you want and having people do the things that you'd like them to do. And it's especially applicable as a business owner and working with, uh, you know, we talked about reciprocity, adding value to your employees and helping them out and getting them on board, building credibility with your employees, lots of ways to use these tactics. Um, it's a, it's a fantastic book. They just did an update because I think it was, I don't know, it might be the 15th year anniversary or something like that. It was uh. written a long time ago. Um, Influence the Psychology of Persuasion by Robert Cialdini. Highly recommend it. <sighs> I like it. Okay. Yeah. I got to put that on my list. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, it's good. I will do my last book. Um, and it's the Dilbert principle by Scott Adams. Uh, oh, yeah. th there are a lot, Scott Adams has gone on to write many other business books, but this really was, I believe the first one that where he, he shared his sometimes crazy thoughts about how to approach business and how to just approach life. And, and, you know, he's he's become sort of a caricature of himself in yeah. terms of his public figure these days. Uh, he's under he be, he's always understood this, but he has embraced the concept of being uh, uh, um, what's the right word for it? It, it? You know, 
abrasive, if you will, and and controversial, controversial. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. In order to to build an audience. And and so he's he's headed down that path. This book sort of came before all of that and and is what sold me on him, despite his desire to be controversial. I hate the whole polarization of everything. I realize it's human nature and I totally understand and respect why he has done this. I think if if I knew him as Scott Adams today, I probably would be less interested in reading his books. And so if today's Scott Adams is the only Scott Adams, you know, and you have avoided reading his books because of that, please don't let that yeah. influence you. Go back, read the Dilbert principle. He put it out, I think, in 1996. So this is way before he he may have discovered, but certainly before he implemented any sort of controversy this was just him saying look i'm just this idiot i decided to do a few things and i believed in myself in a way that other people don't really do and look where it got me that yeah, exactly. th there's some great stuff in the dilbert principle especially for solopreneurs so i i i can't recommend it highly enough and I know it might sound strange uh but you know we i i, I love what scott adams the way he thinks it well, just yeah, fascinates it, me. Yeah, absolutely. And and again, a lot of stuff we talk about here, things that I hear him speak about, and he talks, he frames everything uh, from a persuasion perspective. And if you can get, he, and he did that, he does that with politics as well. And that's yeah. what polarizes so many people Correct. Uh, with him. Um, he's also doing it with the, the COVID and the pandemic and how the government uh, each, it, it's been fascinating. If you listen to him, he was hugely, um, uh, he just ripped the previous administration about how to handle COVID because it, they just they did a poor job. But sure. he's then he's good at picking out good things, bad things. But again, not that he's saying what's right or wrong, but from a persuasion standpoint, if you can get above That's those it. other issues and and look at him, and he'll tell you that right away. He's got a big thing going on vaccinations right now. And, you know, he always says, I'm not telling you to get vaccinated. Yes or no. I'm just telling you how the persuasion is not working from a government perspective, you know, so yeah. it's, 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 it's interesting. Yeah, so. you, you're right. The, the issues that he discusses are things that for some people, for many people are hot button topics. Yes. And, and that's why again, he discusses them. Yes. For a guy who's <laughs> focusing on persuasion, you can understand exactly why he's yeah. choosing these topics, but he dissects them in in a very intelligent way and i i agree with you if you can get past i, I just yeah. stay away from hot button topics because i yeah. i hate the conversations i find myself in because it always becomes a battle but it, it, just ignore that and and especially go back to 1996 and read this book it's it's fantastic it's That's really great, great. Awesome. yeah yeah some really powerful content here folks that uh you know, Dave and I have read, listened to over the years. Um, you know, both of us have, you know, started and run multiple businesses, uh, sold businesses. So, you know, go, go take a look at these things. Tell us what you think. And, uh, we'd love to hear from you. Feedback at business show.co. Absolutely. Um, yep. Thank you so much for listening again this week. Make sure to go to business show.co slash survey and fill out that survey. It really helps us, A, with our sponsors, but B, there are questions in that survey for you from us that, that are for no one else. We want you to talk to us and tell us what you like about the show, what you want to see more of or less of, those sorts of things. Please go fill out that survey, businessshow.co slash survey. We really appreciate it. It helps in so many different ways. And uh, yeah. That's what I got. You got anything else, man? No, man. I'm excited. We're onward. Uh, first week of October. Good things coming our way. Absolutely. Absolutely. Onward and upward. Folks, thanks so much for listening. Make sure to check out our sponsors, as we said in the show, netsuite.com slash SBS, bambi.com slash small. Keep living that charmed life, eh? See you next week.